Netflix recently released a trailer for their new. You don't even have a trans person or a bisexual in here as of right now. And suddenly, so, I don't know how wide this is. It's still boy, oh boy, am I not prepared. What's up, fellow filmmakers? My name is Todd, and. Hi hey everyone, editing Dan here. I just wanted quickly to tell you that this video is going to be all over the place because uh, I didn't have any screenplay and I really hope you enjoy it because I had a lot to say in this video. So if you do, please consider subscribing. It's free, you can always change your mind. So yeah, you know the deal. Thank you. Uh, enjoy the video. You might have heard about new controversial show that Netflix has made. Q Force. If not, um, I'm gonna briefly tell you about it. Animated show about a LGBTQIA plus uh, team, or shall I say LG team? So that's fucking comedy. Let's quickly go back to 2019 when Netflix said they're gonna make a Bye. animated show about queer people. Late June of this year, Netflix has released the first a trailer for this brand new show called Q-Force. The amount of backlash they receive is incomprehensible. It has 9,000 likes as opposed to 100,000 dislikes. That's like YouTube rewind rate. Oh, Netflix is making a gay spy show. Nice presentation. Oh, wait. It's comedy. Well, I guess it's gonna be good self-irony. What the fuck is this trailer? Fast forward to nowadays. A couple of days ago, this show has come out and I watched it. And this show itself did not receive any good ratings either. 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, 5 on IMDb, 3.6 on Google ratings. Who the fuck uses Google rating? I was willing to give this show a second chance because uh, some of it, like, amazing projects cannot be advertised well. So I thought maybe this, this was a case. I turned on the show, I watched the first couple of episodes, and I had an urge to call this video uh, This Netflix Show Has Made Me Straight. Because it felt like I didn't need this kind of representation. Oh yeah, by the way, I am part of LGBTQ plus community. I don't need this representation. This humor is very bigoted. It's very stereotypical and it didn't seem funny to me until I started enjoying this cringe. So, I mean, I love dark humor. I appreciate the comedy that plays on stereotypes like to show how ridiculous they are. And I have self-irony. The problem with the show is it doesn't use this properly. After I watched it, it's not that bad as, as all the reviews suggest. It's not good either, but it's, it's cringy, it's, it's fun, it's lovely, it, it's, it's basically fine, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. I really want to play the lawyer of the devil here, maybe. Maybe it's like, it's bad for representation, but it was meant as a satire, and I feel like I understood that satire, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but it's not that bad actually. To prove that, I, for first like three or four episodes, I was writing down some notes about what was wrong with the show. And just after that, I stopped doing that because I was just enjoying the show. I hopped on the ride and I, I really don't like hating on stuff because first of all, it's easy, it's much harder to find something good in somebody else's artwork then it's just rubber shit on it and this is how cinema sins was poisoning youtube with this kind of shit for almost a decade and second of all uh i am aware how much work went into this all the animations performance and another thing or two about filmmaking i <laughs> am currently in production of one So today I'd like to play some kind of a role of uh, devil's lawyer to defend this film because I realize how much work went into this show and the backlash it's receiving, it's not quite fair. 
Surprisingly, one of the best things in this show is its plot. It's original, it's unpredictable, it's not like any other spy movie show I've seen, and I've seen a lot of spy movies in my time. It's quite unpredictable because you'd expect from this show to be uh, very predictable, just like, you know, those kind of shows to be like just for a tick. Like, we made a show for uh, like with LGBTQ plus characters, but it's not the case in here because, well, they written a really good story. It's, it's questionable in some moments, but overall it has some really good storyline, has a really good plot twist. It can hold the suspense. I haven't noticed like major plot holes that would ruin my viewing experience. The next best thing is absolutely characters. <laughs> I know it's controversial and all, but they're really empathetical. You can relate to them, but I personally can, and not just only because I'm queer. They're, they feel like real people, even though they're poor in no really real circumstances. Uh, they feel alive, they feel emotional, they feel like you can relate to them, basically, as I already have mentioned it. And what also brings the characters on whole another level is the performance. Performance is outstanding. It's, it doesn't feel dragged, it doesn't feel pushed, it feels very natural. And my props to all the actors who sounded the characters, it's, it's brilliant, I have nothing else to say. Characters have clear arcs, they're coherent, they have chemistry between each other, it's, it's brilliant. Even the side characters are done masterfully. My props to all the cast who were voice acting all these characters, it's, it's, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> I have nothing else to add. And straight people are very accurately portrayed. Uh, it's not me hating on straights or anything, but I just found it funny how the show portrayed them. I had zero expectations, I had even like minus hundred, minus thousand expectations when I turned on this show on Netflix, because I thought it's gonna be like very shitty, <laughs> to be honest, and it wasn't. The overall atmosphere and the overall experience of watching the show is they were quite enjoyable at least for me but it doesn't mean that the show is flawless of course and here are where all negative reviews come I'm, I'm not gonna waste your time I'm gonna name them quickly so first of all terminology why 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 uh, I there Quite a few words that I personally don't want to repeat. Uh, they are said by the characters who are LGBT. I, I don't think this should be normalized. I think it's like it's a slur. It's an F and D slur for gay people. And I, I don't think that it should be normalized. Uh, the show is cringy. It's, it's half of the jokes are funny, half of them are cringy, they're not funny, they're very stereotypical and I, I think I know the audience for them but it's, it's not the majority and it's definitely not the queer people that Netflix was uh, targeting at. The show has rating 18 plus. It's for adults! I don't need a show that's for adults only to treat me like a child. L let me elaborate on this. I understand why it's 18 plus show. It has some imagery that I personally wouldn't like to see. And this, fa this falls into another minus I've noticed is that nobody fucking introduces characters like that. I don't need the show to treat me like a child when it does the exposition of the characters. And then jump on the very controversial 18 plus topic with all these characters. They are very poorly introduced. I would have liked implicity in the characters exposition but the exposition was so explicit it, 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 it was just unnecessary at this point. It, I also have some questions about character named Twink. First of all, why is he named like that? Why on God's fucking earth is he called Twink? It's that. It, why is he porn 
actor then. Okay, okay, okay. name him Twink. He is like, he, 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 master of disguises. Why the fuck is he a porn actor and a fucking Dick Grayson from Batman? Why, why, why is this a thing? Okay, another entry from editing, Dan. Don't get me wrong, I... I enjoyed the character, it's like he's very likable character, he's a great character, I just don't understand some choices about him. I feel like some stereotypes are being very bluntly ridiculed, but at the same time, there are other stereotypes in the show that are also being ridiculed, but it's so implicit that the stereotype is being ridiculed that it doesn't feel like a joke anymore. It makes sort of impression that this is normal and it normalizes stuff. I understand that the whole show is supposed to be a satire, but some of the jokes are not very well executed. You cannot understand that these are the jokes and it's very unpleasant contrast between very bluntly ridiculed stereotypes and very uh, poorly executed jokes and it makes this sort of mixed feeling and I remember like halfway through I said to myself like I don't know what am I supposed to feel because sometimes the very good joke would come right after the very bad joke and it just didn't quite make sense. Were we right to judge the Netflix's new show by its trailer? Absolutely. Did it live up to our expectations being so horrible? No, it didn't. The absolute shit show that was happening in the Q-Force trailer does not match the show itself because the show itself is actually not that bad. It's weird, it's cringy, but it's not that bad as the trailer. Netflix also sucks at trailers. It's even it either tells you the whole fucking story or it gives you shit like Q-Force. Netflix, please hire somebody to make good trailers. It's unfucking believable I'm also available for hirement, so you know, you can hire me, Netflix, please, please, Netflix, please hire, please hire me. The email, you know my email, please just hire me, hire me, hire me. Anyway, uh, would I recommend this show? Uh, I don't fucking know, I don't know you. It's like, it's, this is definitely not a show for everyone. I mean, if you have an open mind, if you have like five hours, then why not? Give it a try, maybe you'll like it. And uh, also important note, it gets better as you watch it. It's like, it's pretty sloppy at the first episodes, but as you go on, it it becomes miles better, no joke. It's, it's, it's not that bad of a show, it's just... It could have been executed better, it could have been miles, miles better, it, it could not have played with all the edgy stuff and make it like a little bit more inclusive, more a bit more representative as Netflix originally wanted it to. So what I guess I'm trying to say in this video is that the show is not that bad, is the fact that we're not giving it any second chances. So try it out watch it if you don't like it you don't like it but it is important for all the people who were behind the production of the show to learn from their mistakes and maybe we'll get doubtfully of course doubtfully but maybe someday we'll get a much better season two or even a reboot or something like this but much better because Netflix will learn from their mistakes and seeing all these 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, 5 on IMDb, it's just, it's just not fair. I mean, 5, okay, I could agree with that, but 20%, no, no, it's just not, not gonna happen. Please, if you have an open mind, if you are willing to, give it a try and you should because it's not as bad as it seems in trailer then you should watch it and uh, just support the creators because it's it's really rough on them right now and as a person who puts my art online I know how it is receiving a backlash but I could not apprehend how much harder it would be to receive such like like my backlash is miles less than what they're receiving right now and I was hurt a lot just so please just 
uh, try to critique, not to hate anything that Netflix uh, puts out because there are also people behind it and just basically just give it a try. I, I feel like this needed to be said and trailers, yeah, trailers were, were disastrous, but the show in itself, it's, it's way better. It's way better. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, liking this video. I, I really appreciate it. Check out my stuff. A new short film is coming soon. I'm not sure when, but uh, support all the creators, support me, subscribe. You can change your mind if you want to later, but yeah, peace. All right, freeze. The room's empty. I wasted all that masculinity on nothing. Not nothing. My little butthole went...